when he's uh, big, he actually would still go. So, and now I call for a quorum. Mr. Chairman, please, I call for a quorum.
有冇啊？謝偉俊議員 ，Mr. Porter。On Amendment Seven Seven Four Seven Seven Five Seven 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 Two Seven Five One, um, I have a number of observations. Now he said that if the mainland offices and the Taiwan offices couldn't get their work done, we shouldn't give them an increase in budget. But I think uh, perhaps by way of example, the hospital authority or the legal services, the uh, or the legal aid department. You know, we can't guarantee that every case will win, but still we must um, give resources to them to help those involved. So it's a matter of whether they have tried their best in uh, working on the cases. So it, it, um, I think what Mr. Leung said um, uh, does not hold water. It's not because uh, they uh, don't succeed in cases, then we should take away all the money. I hope he's not saying that uh, we should also take away all the money from the hospital authority or the legal aid department. I'm sure that's not what he meant. Now, for the complaints division, um, he said that how we pursue cases. Yeah, I, I also take up cases, actually. Okay. He said for uh, uh, I, I handle quite a number of cases, and as uh, some members said uh, that there were cases that people keep re uh, complaining, they keep repeating the complaint. It could be rather tedious, so we have to de decide when to stop, so we won't waste time and money instead of insisting on uh, doing it and wasting time and money as some people are doing. Mr. Albert Chen. Yesterday, I explained in detail why I have moved some amendments to scrap the funding for the Constitutional Mainland Affairs Bureau and the, the Taiwan offices. Perhaps he didn't follow my speech, so he didn't respond. But of course, if he's interested, he could um, listen to my comments, and I welcome a response from him. On cases made uh, lost by the public to the honourable members, the life and death of um, members of the public uh, is vexatious or frivolous. My but uh, for in many cases, members of the public have suffered unfair treatment, and uh, the impact can uh, be lifelong. So, uh, whether a case is frivolous or vexatious is a matter of judgment. All right, Paul Zia has just uh, walked out. So uh, this is what I call biased in uh, or selective in listening. I hope he can uh, listen to my tape recording uh, on uh, provision for CMAB. Now, since uh, Mr. Paul Zia is not here, to be fair, you uh, said uh, that something was uh, frivolous or uh, I, to be fair, uh, Trivial. To be fair, he did not uh, use uh, this uh, uh, description. He said some of the cases were uh, rather um, nuisance, is rather nuisance and uh, very lengthy. Well, whether uh, they these cases uh, were lengthy and. Uh, and whether uh, we uh, should tackle such cases as a matter of judgment. Now, let me say here that I cannot stop members from speaking on the ground that they are uh, frivolous and uh, trivial. There is no ROP to allow me to stop a member from speaking. However, if members Labour or on his or other a member's point repetitively, I can stop him. These two are separate matters, so I hope that uh, you will not repeat your points in a rather annoying manner. Well, I uh, I uh, found it unacceptable that uh, he uh, was mixing the two, but anyway, um. The criteria are different. I will not consider on this point. Uh, regarding uh, the uh, money for buying um, 
video cams for the police, I uh, oppose that estimate. Well, uh, I'd like to uh, speak on Mr. Leung Kwok Hong's proposal uh, to cut the police provision by $64,895,000, equivalent to the whole year provision for the police to purchase special purpose vehicles. We all think that police um, uh, equipment is very expensive, and should money be spent in this way, I think we should examine the estimate more carefully. If we look at past um, figures, well, the spending on special vehicles is quite uh, appalling. In uh, 2012, uh, one mil $180 million was spent. In 2013, $88.3 million uh, this year. Uh, the um, provision is just about $64.8 million. Uh, this is uh, for replacement of 88 vehicles. Fifteen um, across country uh, vehicles for the police, nine uh, large uh, scale uh, heavy duty uh, coaches, and nine uh, police uh, motorbikes. Uh, the police have been using uh, motorbikes made uh, on the mainland, and this has attracted some uh, criticism, and 51 uh, large uh, goods vehicles and one, again, across uh, country vehicle. I don't know what is it for. Is it for uh, chasing illegal immigrants? I don't know what that's for. And also um, large police um, goods vehicles. Well, for 51 uh, goods and a passenger vehicle, uh, the provision is $41.6 million. That is close to $80,000 per vehicle. We're talking about uh, goods or passenger vehicle. It's going to cost $800,000. Isn't it a bit too extravagant? I don't know. What is the special purpose? Has it got... Um, uh, uh, a bullet resistant glass, or is the steel particularly sturdy that it uh, will be able to uh, withstand bombs? $800,000 per vehicle. I believe the majority of the public will find that too expensive. And I am still not convinced, so I will not lightly approve uh, such a spending. And if you look at the um, lifespan of these vehicles. For most of uh, the vehicles proposed uh, to be changed, well, most of the money is for uh, replacing old vehicles. One cross-country uh, vehicle uh, would cost $600,000. Is there a genuine need for that? Because I uh, think uh, we can make use of uh, Modern day technology. Do we really need a cross country vehicle uh, for operation purpose? We really don't know. And for uh, that, usually for a motorbike of uh, the police, uh, the lifespan is about five years. No matter how expensive it is, uh, it will only uh, last for about five years. Um, I don't know myself. Uh, I can uh, usually uh, use the same vehicle or same car for uh, 15 years. So a motorbike has to be replaced after five years of service. I think uh, this is rather uh, extravagant. And other vehicles by the police to be replaced every seven years, regardless of uh, the condition. Again, is it uh, too extravagant? and? Uh, rather unfriendly to the environment. So uh, whenever you um, replace a vehicle, there would be a scrap metal produced. I don't think this is value for money. And it's also uh, not uh, friendly to the environment. For very important vehicles uh, that uh, you um, you, that you must have, well, you should maintain them properly. And if vehicles and motor
bikes are to be replaced every seven and five years respectively. This is not value for money. I hope that the audit commission can uh, scrutinize this expenses very carefully. And now amendment number 361 involving head 72 to uh, cut our uh, $17.49 million from uh, this subhead. And this is proposed by Mr. Leung Kwa Hong, uh, that is ICAC's spending on publicity. I think uh, Mr. Leung Kwa Hong is very in interesting. Uh, he would uh, like to cut that uh, seventeen million dollars to uh, ten. To uh, like to cut it to ten dollars. I don't know what is it for uh, purchasing a uh, money uh, for the dead. So, uh, how is the money uh, going to be used? Uh, I think this is related to uh, the chairman of a state enterprise, Song Lin. Uh, because the police has set up an advisory committee for the Ethics De Development Center. Uh, the, there should be arrangements uh, for this center, but it's strange that the appointment of members to this advisory committee uh, is uh, not really subject to our scrutiny. The Ethics Development Center uh, was uh, established in May 1995 with representatives from five major chambers of commerce. Mr. Chen, I uh, would like to invoke uh, ROP number 451 because I have heard uh, what the honourable member said umpteen times. Now, this is the first time I'm speaking on this. This is my first time commenting on uh, ICAC, this committee of the ICAC. This is the first time I'm speaking on this item. Well, please go on, Ms. Chan. I will follow your uh, speech. And I hope Mr. Tem Yu Chung can also uh, listen to uh, Mr. Chen's uh, remarks. Mr. Tem Yu Chung, well, I have heard about the composition of the uh, Ethics Development um, Committee many, many times. Which member? Uh, many, many times from uh, the three of them. Mr. Lagong, I've never uh, talked about this committee. Uh, please uh, sit down first, Mr. Leung Kwa Hong. Uh, Mr. Abba Chen, uh, please do not uh, repeat on the composition of the committee again. Well, I have not uh, heard um, about this from other members. Perhaps I uh, was not always uh, present. And Mr. Tem Yu Chong said that I have uh, spoken on this a number of times. Perhaps uh, it was uh, a ghost speaking. Now, I hope members will not uh, disseminate uh, untrue or wrong. Uh, new uh, messages. Well, because uh, a member raised a point of order, I had to make a ruling. I'm just saying that uh, Tam Yu Chong is making accus accusations uh, lightly. This is important to set a record straight. I uh, cannot be smeared. Why do we have uh, to delete the provision for this? I think the logic is simple. The composition is mainly representatives from Chambers of Commerce, uh, the Hong Kong FI, the American Chamber of Commerce, the Hong Kong Chinese um, Ch Chamber of Commerce, the Association of Manufacturers in China, and uh, the uh, Hong Kong China Chamber of Commerce. The or the chief executive or chairman of these uh, Chambers of Commerce would take a turn to be the chairman of the committee. I think there is a big problem here. Because chairman of committees under the ICAC should be uh, subject to a very stringent integrity checking. As we all know, uh, when members are appointed to ASB, of course, after 689, 
has become the CE. Uh, there's been a catastrophic change in integrity vetting of these members, leading to a crisis in governance and uh, public credibility. However, the ICC should have their own system for integrity checking. Of course, this is a long-standing arrangement, but I believe uh, the uh, CNA executive or upper echelon of these chambers of commerce uh, should uh, be of uh, good integrity. I do think uh, the uh, recent incident is within the control of the ICC. And um, and then uh, not long ago, there was also uh, the incident of Timothy Tong. I think uh, this has worsened the situation for ICAC. So the commission of ICAC uh, was suspected of uh, corrupt practices. He is supposed to be responsible for ethics development. This advisory committee on ethics development, or the chairman, was uh, involved in corrupt practices. So isn't it a big a joke? This is entirely ridiculous. And it has some um, doubt, a heavy blow to the morale of ICAC staff. It is not fair at all to ICAC staff. And I have every sympathy for the staff of ICAC, uh, the senior staff in particular, the experienced staff in particular, they have uh, worked very hard for decades so that they have built up a, a, um, a convention and uh, values of ICAC uh, that they can take pride in and also the envy of other countries. But uh, there have been uh, one PR disaster after another uh, dealing almost a fatal blow to the image of ICAC. To avoid such problems from happening again, the government must carry out a fundamental review and uh, a revamp of uh, the uh, composition of such organizations. Or else, if they can become chairman of such committees without a very thorough and stringent integrity check, then that would cause problems. And also, if they are allowed to take turns uh, to become chairman of uh, such committees, I would also have a lot of uh, uh, queries about this because uh, being the head of a, com a chamber of commerce, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're interested uh, in ethics uh, development. Well, the fact that uh, you're just the head or the CEO or the chairman of uh, chambers of commerce, and once it's your turn, you can become the chairman of the Ethics Development Committee. So it's almost like a tag-on thing for uh, a chamber of uh, a chambers of commerce, and uh, you could end up appointing the most inappropriate person to the Ethics Development Committee, like the case of uh, Song Lin being the chairman of the Ethics Development Committee. So it's a disaster or a catastrophe for the committee. So in order not to bring shame or embarrassment to the ICAC, well, we don't have the power to scrap the committee altogether, but at least uh, we can uh, delete the funding for this committee. That's why I think uh, Lam Kuo Hong has a lot of political wisdom in doing so, and I'm prepared to support it. Yes, Lam Kuo Hong? Account for quorum, please.
。梁国雄议员。Mr. Lam Kok Hong. Thank you, Mr. Deputy. All right. Uh, I'm glad that everyone is here. In particular, Tony Chair is here. I'd like to respond to his criticisms against us. Uh, in particular. Uh, against uh, me personally, well, apparently he's saying that uh, the logic is wrong. All right, uh, they are not doing a good job, and therefore uh, 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 he's uh, objecting to my proposal to cut their funding. But then it's not just about they're not doing their job at all. They should have kept the record so that we can uh, appraise them or at least uh, check their performance. But then uh, this is a basic function, and yet they have, fa they have failed it. The mainland offices and the um, Taiwan office, they served a number of functions. First, to provide information to uh, residents of Hong Kong on the mainland and for uh, residents in distress in the mainland to provide practical assistance. So what is the problem then? Uh, for this function to provide practical assistance to Hong Kong residents in distress in the mainland, we asked for figures from the government. They had a number of cases asking for help. We asked them if there were successful cases, and they said, sorry, those cases were complex. And one case varied for another, so they did not have any record. But that doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense at all. It's not about whether they are able to get any work done, but what, rather we want to see why they couldn't get their work done, or why in some cases they managed to help the people in the others they couldn't. But they couldn't even give us that information. I, but that's the very basic records they should keep. You know, and what they have done, what follow-up has been taken, and so on. If members think that it's not right for us to cut the budget, I don't see what would be right then. Now, a lot of members accuse us that, uh, well, or, or condemn us for cutting budgets of different departments. Fine if you didn't hear the arguments clearly, but um, you mustn't such issues. Here I'm talking about the mainland offices and the Taiwan office. I'll talk about the Taiwan office later. Every year the increase in budgets is substantial. 2012 to 13, they applied for $176 million. 2013 to 14, 200 and point three million million, $203 million. And then eventually it's been revised to $205.6 million. This year, from $205.6 million, um, is to be increased to $251.6 million, 22.4% increase. Now, LESCO members ask them, um, they're spending so much money, what's the effectiveness? But then they didn't say anything. They should have an indicator to show how successful they are. For example, in their reply to our question in 2013, dealing with cases in relation to immigration matters and personal safety, 156 cases for Beijing office, uh, Guangdong ETO, 144 cases, Shanghai ETO, Mr. Lang Kwok Hong, if I may remind you, the figures have actually been quoted by Mr. Albert Chen. Please do not repeat the arguments advanced by other members. You should have heard the other members' arguments, okay? So please be concise. Okay, fine. Well, my argument is this. We, must, we shouldn't ask them whether they f managed to get their work done, but rather whether they have kept a comprehensive record to give us an account of what they've done. Now, I'm proposing a cut of their pay, um, um, targeting at their practice, that is, um, 
they won't tell you anything, so you can't find fault in what they provide to you. Rather, they just fudge the issue. They just can, um, uh, and so you can't tell whether they are doing their work. So this is totally undesirable. So I'm trying to explain to Dr. An Chan and uh, Mr. Porte that if you listen to us carefully, you will be able to tell the difference, and you won't be so angry. I'm not talking about whether they could get their work done, but rather. In a bureaucracy, they deliberately destroy or not keep records, so we couldn't monitor them. So, so we know exactly what we are talking about. Now, mainland and Thailand one offices. There's one example I'm sure Mr. Albert Chen hasn't mentioned, but this is a um, um, thought-provoking example because uh, it could cost lives. It's about the uh, treatment of the volunteers group going to Sichuan. The program says to provide information and other su appropriate support to Hong Kong residents in the mainland, or even give them assistance. Now, the pe volunteers went to the Ya'an earthquake zone to help with disaster relief. Hong Kong people went there, 16 of them. They stayed in a hotel. Mil the military police, uh, the armed police, and the uh, army um, chased them, chose, uh, chased them away because they were in danger. So, uh, but they were just trying to, you know, find lodging there. So they were chased away like chickens and ducks. They tried to ask for help. No one could help them. The economic and trade office wasn't able to help them. Now we have a new economic and trade office in Chengdu. So that's the testing stone case, the testing case. But give me, uh, uh, please bear with me. Let me tell you what one of the volunteers said. I felt like I was um, f um, kicked around like a football. So what help did uh, the office give to them? Now, the government said that um, um, the cases were difficult. It covered, uh, and they covered different issues. So there was no record. So we couldn't find any information from them. We have to go and find information ourselves. On this point, they're being irresponsible. But of course, uh, you have instructed me not to go into details. So I do not propose to say any more on this. Now I move on to another subject. About the independent uh, police committee, the IPCC. Five amendments number five seven zero and five seven one. The IPCC. It plays an important function. That is, they will independently monitor the work of the campaigns against police office. That is uh, the CAPO. The CAPO must report um, on progress of investigation into complaint cases. The IPCC is to monitor whether the CAPO is um, uh, handling these cases in a fair and impartial manner. So that's what the IPCC is supposed to do. That means uh, the capo is about um, you know police officers investigating their own uh, around the world. Some uh, do the same, some don't. So to be fair, we use public money to set up the independent police complaints council, just to make sure things are fair. That means it's not just the for the police officers to investigate their own kind, but rather there is um, council with the Secretariat to monitor the work of CAPO. What is the main functions of the IPCC is in there in the brief description, and I won't read them out. But one of its most important functions is 
to review investigation conducted by the capo. But if there are too many cases, of course, they can't review each and every case. So when you, uh, when when someone lodges a complaint with the IPCC, then the IPCC will ask to look at case uh, these cases investigated by the capo, the complaints against police office. Well, this has been a system for a long time. The merits of this system is that Mr. Lang Kwok Hong, there is no need to go into the merits or the merits of the um, IPCC. You want to cut the budget. Can you please give your arguments for that or your justifications for that? Okay, we're talking about cutting the full year's budget of the IPCC. Why? Why are we doing that? Because we can only cut the budget, uh, cut the uh, the provisions, we cannot increase the provisions, so we have no other choices. The IPCC, you look at um, the funding it receives each year, is on the increase year on year. 2012 to 13, the actual financial provision, $46.7 million. And then 2013 to 14, that's increased to $49.8 million. 2013 to 14 revised provision 50.9 million dollars and this year is increased to be increased to 56 million dollars so every year there's a rather substantial increase of some 10 percent so compared to to the revised 2013-14 provision there's an increase of 10 percent compared to the 2013 to 14 or regional estimate is an increase of 12.4 percent now, I would say the ICAC faces a few difficulties in investigating, in looking at cases. First, it doesn't have its own investigative powers. In other words, it cannot investigate into cases on its own. It's only when someone lodges a complaint or if it's come to the attention of the IPCC uh, about some cases, then the, the IPCC may ask CAPO to um, provide the case information. And if there's no complaint, they can't look into cases. And after they review the case, they're not happy with it, they can't do their own investigation. They must still ask the police, the uh, capo, to do the investigation. I think there should be improvement here. Now, should the Independent Police Complaints Council be given special investigative powers. doesn't mean that they investigate into everything, but rather if they've classified a case or if they looked at the case and the capo fails to provide a report after one or two or three attempts, and then the IPCC should have the power to ask the chief executive to set up an investigation team to look into the case. I think we could deal with that, like myself. You know, people keep spraying at me. And then I went. I go to the capo to make a statement. A statement is not done properly. Mr. Lang Kuo Hong, do you need to declare interest here? No, there's no interest. There's no pecuniary interest involved. Uh, I, my interest is that I'm a victim. There's no direct pecuniary interest. I don't plan to seek civil damages. So thank you, Mr. Chairman, for reminding me. But perhaps I should still say it. Now, I'm one who always complain about the police. So I've been through many of these cases, uh, but I feel frustrated uh, because uh, they never get, get to find anything. And um, the capital would say, or uh, IPC would say that the case is under investigation and then the case drags on for a long time. And then the police may abuse uh, their powers. That is, if you complain against them, they will first book you uh, on a criminal charge. So then the complaint case has to be put on hold until the in criminal investigation is completed. So for those who lodge complaints, this is uh, actually pressure on them. It's intimidating to them. That is, if you want to complain against the police, the statement you give to the capo may become the evidence for prosecuting you in court. So you'll be worried. And secondly, when you 
make a complaint against police, it gives them motivation to arrest you. So my point is we must do a comprehensive review of the powers of the IPCC and to see how it could conduct independent investigation. I think that's crucial. So that's why I am proposing to cut its um, budget. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I hope, uh, Mr. Chairman, you will also monitor members' attendance at the meeting. I call for quorum. Thank you. We are still in the meeting. Please respect uh, the council.
Does any member wish to speak? If no, Ms. An Chang. Ms. An Chang. Uh, Chairman, if I may respond to Mr. Liang Kuo Hong, he is out. After he has spoken, he goes out. I just want to say why I need to reply to him. In the past few days, he and other members have uh, spoken a lot. Many uh, citizens don't know what uh, is the uh, content of uh, their filibustering. I am now going to respond to the point he uh, just made. Uh, what he said in the previous days were really outrageous, nonsense, and frivolous, and trivial, and therefore I'm not going to respond to all those. I want to speak on one to one, head one to one, cutting all the uh, budgeted expenditure of the IPCC. They say that uh, all money should be taken away from the IPCC because the IPCC doesn't have independent investigating power. The IPCC, the IPCC is responsible for reviewing the um, complaints, uh, looking into the numbers, doing some analysis, reviewing procedures, and making uh, recommendations to the authorities. They don't have the power to conduct any investigation. Now, when a case is being investigated by the police, any member of the IPCC can be observers, uh, can be an observer to look at the, in the investigation process, and can even uh, meet with the complainant. Um, if uh, the funding is taken away, all staff members uh, will have no salary, or rather, all staff all staff members will not be given any salary. Uh, their jobs will be taken away. They uh, they even want to uh, do away with the whole committee. I think that's his thinking. Uh, this council has a budget of uh, six hundred million dollars, and our. Uh, uh, what offices uh, cost uh, 10 or 10% 10 more over the last year. Now these uh, members are wasting taxpayers' money to such an uh, extent. I have to s express my dissatisfaction. They are just raising the lengthy and trivialous issues. That's, uh, so I submit uh, in rebuttal to Mr. Leung Kohong. Does any, any other member wish to speak? Mr. Amper Chan. I thank Ms. An Chang for her response, but uh, he only listened to some of our views, but not uh, the, the uh, whole content. He talks about our uh, views being tedious and uh, nonsensical, but she has to listen to her own tone. Uh, it's really the tedious and trivial. We have been uh, criticizing the work of the IPCC and CAPO, uh, Mr. Albert Chan. Please uh, support your viewpoints uh, if you are speaking on head one to one. One of the reasons that uh, we can speak uh, on more than one occasion is that we can all talk about our our uh, justific rationale and uh, reasons for uh, for holding certain views, and I'm just saying that over the years, uh, many members have asked for the reform of the IPCC, especially on the necessity to have independent. Uh, members conducting the uh, investigation into complaints. That's the uh, crust of the matter. We have many uh, ex-IPCC uh, members here, uh, for example, Mr. Lam Tai Fai. Why do we have to have, to have the, an independent ICAC? 
why do we ask for independent investigation powers to be conferred on ICAC? Why do we have the ombudsman? Even the H Hospital Authority has set up a separate uh, complaints investigation committee uh, comprising out people outside of uh, HA. And why the, recently the uh, CE has to appoint an independent committee to look into the delay of the express rail link project? Because uh, if uh, the investigation is conducted by uh, their own directors, and for example, Mr. Abraham Shack is an independent non-executive director of the DMTRC, and uh, investigation carried out by your own people do not command public trust, then that's why we want to cut the, the budget for IPCC to express our dissatisfaction, and we hope by doing this, we can force the uh, government to change the whole way the system is operated. I uh, just want to tell Miss An Jiang this because uh, she doesn't need seem to uh, a gra have a graph uh, of the uh, full background, and what she says might be misleading uh, to the public. Who doesn't want to? Who, who does any other member wish to speak? Uh, Mr. Ray Chen, I've called Mr. Ray Chen first. Thank you, Mr. Deputy. Before I proceed, I want to talk about 570-571 proposed by Mr. Leon Ko Hong, and that is uh, in relation to the IPCC. Uh, two amendments have been moved. I have uh, spoken once on uh, the amendments. Having listened to Mr. Leung Ko Hong, I would say I agree with Ms. An Chang because the logic seemed to be a bit confused. I hope uh, in due course, Mr. Leung Ko Hong will speak again on the uh, head covered by the amendments. He complains that uh, the funding uh, was insufficient, and therefore, in because of uh, we don't have the power to increase the budget, he uh, proposes to reduce the budget. Since uh, the budget is not good enough to have uh, the job properly done, let's cut it. And uh, it's hoped that uh, the administration uh, will be frightened, and then a review will be carried out. But uh, I, I do not adopt the same approach. I will not uh, cut the entire budget just because it's insufficient. Now the IPCC doesn't have any power to investigate, to impose penalty, or to the establish a case to be uh, investigated. I want to set up uh, a, an IPCC that has the power to investigate complaints, to direct that uh, a complaint be looked into, and also to impose penalty. If we don't have an independent ICAC with all those powers, would you agree? Of course not. Although some cases may require confidenti confidentiality, and uh, the information may not be uh, made available to all IPCC members. If we have a new IPCC, uh, at least uh, the information should be uh, made available to the chairman, deputy chairman, the legal advisor to the new IPCC, or some designated uh, staff members of the uh, secretariat, instead of uh, keeping everything under wraps. So I support the proposed amendments, but not on the logic as uh, spelled out uh, by uh, Ms. Leung Ko Hong. Ms. The current chairman uh, will have of the IPCC will have his term expired at the end of, uh, the, of May, having served the IPCC for six years, i.e. Uh, three terms each lasting two years. So if we support these uh, amendments, we can also s 
take the opportunity to reform the IPCC. The IPCC should also do some preventive work. For example, recently, uh, major uh, large-scale protests and uh, rallies have attracted the highest number of uh, complaints. And uh, therefore, in recent years, IPCC uh, sent uh, their members to observe major protests and uh, and um, rallies. They would um, they would meet with uh, organizers of uh, these uh, protests, and uh, also afterwards they would uh, try to touch base with uh, these people. But it's not very effective. So let's uh, support the two amendments so that we can uh, establish a truly independent IPCC. That's all for amendments 570 and 571. Uh, more than an hour ago, after I spoke, Mr. Paul Chair, uh, I would say I won't say he uh, criticized me. He raised some questions. Uh, and I think a response from me is called for. I want to cut. I want to support uh, a cut of the budget of the EOC uh, because of the work its work uh, for the sexual minorities. Last time I was talking about Amendment Seven Nine One. It's a uh, head one four four CMAB. Resolve to re reduce uh, subhead O O O under head one four four. Is eight point oh nine four million dollars, and that is uh, the expenditure, the budget. Annual budget for CMAB to carry out activities to promote uh, uh, human rights. It's head one four four CMAB, and uh, it's under program four. Individual rights of the individual. But uh, Mr. Leung Ko Hong's proposed cut is not uh, about this uh, program. Subventions for EOC is under Program Five, is uh, covered by the uh, item subventions to EOC and the PCO. In 2014-2015, subventions for the EOC is uh, 101.4 million dollars, and I'm just asking for a cut of uh, 8.095 million dollars. The two, the two, the two sums are different. The funding for the EOC has uh, gone up by 7.6%. Whether this is a sufficient increase, I would uh, comment on another occasion. But I was not uh, proposing to cut the funding of uh, the EOC. Uh, with regard to Program 4, promotion of uh, human rights and uh, equality, and uh, the eight million odd dollars uh, part of it would be used to look into issues related to sexual minorities, but over the years, as we are well aware of the c m a b hasn't done much to promote the uh, equality. And the rights of uh, the sexual minorities, so sexual minorities uh, won't mind the, the proposed cut. We might as well give the money to the EOC, so that the money can be better s utilized. That's um, what I want to respond to the Mr. Porges' uh, comments. I want to now turn to children's rights. The population of children in Hong Kong is uh, 1.1 million, or 15 percent of the total population. Ethnic minorities takes up five to seven percent. Homosexuals six to ten percent of the population. According to the funding ratios, children would receive the least 
15% uh, of our population. It's just 1.25 million. Sexual minorities will get uh, 2.6 million. Uh, race, uh, ethnic minorities will get 3.35 million dollars. So ethnic minorities uh, has the smallest uh, percentage, but uh, get the highest uh, funding. Well, it's, it's in that order, in the or in ascending order, uh, in descending order, uh, ethnic minorities, homosexuals, and children. But uh, the funding ratio is uh, in the reverse order. According to the administration, the funding for, uh, to promote the ch uh, rights of the child would uh, be used to organize uh, forums, conferences, and uh, other publicities. The forum on the right of the ch rights of the child has been criticized to be a routine matter and is not really useful in uh, promoting uh, the rights of the child. Uh, last year, on September the 13th, uh, a SAR delegation went to the UN to the attend a hearing. We have been uh, asking for this repeatedly, and the UN too. More than once, the UN has asked the uh, SAR government to comply with the convention, but the SAR government would not budge. So what would the government do? He would organize the conference, the routine conference, and also uh, it would uh, rely on the family council to do the job. Uh, since the uh, family includes, uh, includes children, today is the UN uh, Family Day. There are many people in, in the family if we want to safeguard and promote the rights of the child, we cannot rely on the Family Council. According to the UN, the two initiatives, the uh, Family Council and the conference, will not be sufficient to the, bring the voice of the child to the policy level. Obviously, the government wants to muddle through, and they do not pay attention or attach any importance to the 1.1 million um, children. June 2007, the LegCo passed a motion of Dr. Fernando Zhang, uh, which urges the administration to set up a children's council. The administration responded with a family council. A few months ago, all legislators voted for a motion asking the administration to set up a, a children's council. When I think these let's call uh, non-binding motions will not yield any result. However, when it comes to an appropriation bill in the committee stage, you cut its budget then it will be effective. All 70 members voted for the setting up of a children's council, but they did, did not do anything. Every year, they just um, um, pay lip service to the to the LegCo with, with the family council. They just um, deal with it from the perspective of family only from an adult's perspective, not children's perspective. So how can we make sure that children's voices will be heard in a formulation of policies? If you look at it through the eyes of parents, well, it will more or less be the same thing. You should be obedient, you should uh, work hard, you should study hard, and this and that. It's just so cliche. Well, I think if you start from the uh, welfare well-being of children, of course, you would want more resources on education. It seems that nowadays people pay little attention to the right to play. To parents, it seems that that will be a sacrilege because they should spend their time on studying or learning uh, instruments. According to a UN Convention on the Rights of uh, the Child, Article 31, children should have 
a sufficient time to play and engage in cultural recreational activities they like. However, these uh, helicopter parents in Hong Kong, they uh, force their children to take up extracurricular activities, learning different instruments. So what are the fundamental rights of, ch of our children? The right to play, the right to rest, the right to leisure. Dr. Fernando Zhang once again moved a motion to to set up a children's council, and it was endorsed by all members. However, the administration said that well, um, we have uh, welfare, we have health care, we have education. So the uh, benefits of the welfare of children has been well taken care of. Children, they think that children is only a group of um, beneficiaries of. Resources, as long as there is resources, you should keep your mouth shut. But if we look at the program, in the past year, the administration put in place five um, items of work to promote children's rights. Two less than last year. One, to promote the um, children's uh, funding scheme to uh, an outreach scheme to an outreach program to uh, promote children's rights, three APIs in this uh, regard. But these are just going through the motion. They are just promotion and publicity. And we have two items less this year, Ms. An Chang. Thank you, Deputy Chair. I would like to respond to what uh, Mr. Albert Chen said just now. He said that I did not hear it um, carefully and this and that. I don't blame him. As you know that, um, well, he's very loud and he looks aggressive. He thinks he's uh, an, um, the almighty Albert Chan. And I think that, uh, well, their minds are, is failing them. On the 28th of um, April in uh, Health um, Services Panel, Mr. Chen admitted that uh, he is bipolar and is getting more and more serious and he even suggests that there should be a resident a psychiatrist in the council. And he thinks he's Hem Ernest Hemingway, he's Van Gogh, Beethoven, Darwin, because they all suffer from some kind of uh, mental disorder. So he, th he thinks that uh, um, having a mental problem is uh, something to be proud of. And I just laugh it off. And I would like to respond to Mr. Ray Chan. He's not here. He's gone. He spoke and then he left. Look at them. Well, also, I will call for, I will call for Coram to get him back here. Let me finish. I'm only halfway through. It's a point of order.
John Iwan Yu. Ms. N. Chang. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Before the bell, I said that Mr. Albert Chen, on the 28th of April at a meeting, he said that he suffered from depression and uh, mania. He's a bipolar. I don't know how serious he is, but uh, looking at his performance in recent days, it makes people believe that he is getting worse as far as his illness is concerned. As for those, as for a person who is suffering from this kind of illness, um, uh, we should uh, express our concern. So I don't mind about what he just said now. And as concerning the IPCC, Mr. Chen Chi Chun asked her to cut uh, its expenditure, not a cent will be given to it, so that it can, it is forced to uh, conduct a reform. I want to tell Mr. Chen, he's not here. Uh, I just uh, those who are here uh, should tell him, if he wants the IPCC uh, to reform or to be reformed, then he should formally move a uh, motion or introduce an agenda item at our panel, uh, or he can talk to the uh, policy secretary and make his and uh, makes his proposal clear. He doesn't need to uh, take away all the expenditure uh, for the council. Or, I mean the IPCC. It shows that he uh, doesn't have any knowledge of uh, of management and he just take away takes away the money uh to force the government uh to bow to his demand i hope uh, although mr chen is not here i hope other members will uh, not follow the track of uh, somebody who has mental illness that's all i want to say uh, mr kenneth Leung. Well, Mr. Uh, Chairman, I have not spoken uh, for quite some time in this chamber. I hope I can make full use of 15 minutes. Uh, this is about amendment number 570 moved by Mr. Leung Kwok Hong on cutting the expenditure of the IPCC by $54 million and also 571 cutting the uh, budgeted expenditure of the IPCC uh, by $27,212,000. Uh, well, I hope that what I said will not, what I say will not be regarded as frivolous or even absurd or um, regarded as worse of an idiot. Well, I have to clarify that uh, I am a member of the IPCC. I have been a member for three years. In fact, several members here are members of the IPCC. That is, uh, the vice chairman is also here. Uh, uh, Mr. Lem Tai Fai has, uh, and also uh, Ms. Abraham Shek and Mr. Chen Kin Po are members, but we don't see Mr. Chen Kin Po today. Now, the uh, IPCC ordinance uh, was enacted in 2008. Therefore, the IPCC is an independent um, statutory body. Its statutory status is no different from uh, that of the SFC or the ICAC. In terms of statutory status, it is the same as the bodies I mentioned earlier. Mr. IPCC mentioned that IPCC didn't have, uh, doesn't have the following powers. Number one, independent uh, investigation power, uh, directly receive power to receive a uh, campaign direct, directly, and no power of sanction. Why uh, there are no such powers? Uh, it is a long story. Even if the IPCC is given about uh, 50 odd million dollars, the amount is not enough. In recent years, the IPCC Its operation has been extended substantially, and its recognition among uh, the members of the public has also been uh, improved. Now, the IPCC wants to have a deputy secretary uh, to deal with the administrative work. 
of the IPCC and also publicity work, but the proposal is not accepted by the Security Bureau. There is only a Deputy Secretary grade equivalent uh, who is the Secretary General of the IPCC. There is another proposal to recruit more case officers. The couple, after receiving a complaint and then after it has uh, drawn up a file, will have to give it to uh, the um, IPCC's case officer and also the uh, legal advisor and also the members of the IPCC and also the chairman of IPCC. We have to uh, look at each and every case. At peak time, we have to look at 10 to 20 cases per week. And the cases are brought to our office at, say, 4 or 5 p.m. on Friday. So on Saturday and Sunday, we have to spend our time on reading these case files. We want more resources from the administration to recruit more uh, case officers. We are full-time workers. We are members. We, uh, 24 of, of us, are working full-time. The administration has to be humane to us as well. The, IPA, the IPCC doesn't have the power to receive complaints directly, nor does it have investigation power. But under 81C of the IPCC ordinance, it has the power to uh, go to the commissioner or to the CE to make recommendations on procedures so that the complaints against the police will be reduced. We can make good recommendations on procedures or on the system uh, on system on systemic matters so as to reduce the complaints. Uh, and in fact the chairman Mr Check has done a lot of work. Just now Mr Chen Chi Chun uh, mentioned the public order events. In recent years the IPCC takes the initiative uh, has taken the initiative to send members of the secretariat or members of the council to be of service. We are not doing so. Say on the first of seven, uh, first of July, uh, gathering, I, I was present and I worked from two p.m. to seven p.m. or rather twelve uh, midnight. Now after the march. Uh, there was a group of people uh, gathering in the central, and members of the IPCC and the, and the Secretariat stayed until midnight to see how the police um, did its work. Uh, and before the uh, gathering, we participated in the meeting between the police and the organizers in deciding on uh, the alignment of the march and then the size of booths and stalls along the way. Um, some asked why last year or the, the, the last, um, yes, last year, uh, the administration or the police uh, put the stalls too far away or the booths too far away. And then uh, they complained that that would not uh, serve the purpose of the stalls or the um, um, booths. And we th we did intervene, uh, although our work is uh, uh, though our work is not perfect. Now I say our work is not perfect because of following reasons. Let's talk about the background. In the past, the vice chairman of the IBCC, uh, Mr. Uh, Alan Leung, uh was uh, a vice chairman, and then um, Mr. Joseph Lee had been the chairman, vice chairman. And now the vice chairman is either Mr. Abraham Shek or Mr. Chen Kam Lam or Mr. Chen Kim Po. I don't know whether you think the, the uh, chairmanship is a bit biased. As for resources for the IPCC is really limited. Apart from manpower, which is a constraint, there is also an other constraint, which is the inadequacy of publicity and education. Members of the public cannot complain to the IPCC directly. The, it, they have to knock on the door of the couple. But we have not given uh, adequate uh, public education. Many come to the office of the IPCC. There is a publicity working group under the IPCC. The chairman of the working group 
until the end of 2013 was Mr. Albert Chen. Ms. Albert Cheng. Uh, Mr. Albert Cheng had been a member for four years of the IPCC. If the administration has the six times six rule, then I really find it mind boggling that why Mr. Cheng, after four years, uh, has been terminated by the Security Bureau. He is not reappointed for another two years, though Mr. Cheng's performance has been widely recognized. Now, the, we, uh, were, we were told that the 6-6 six, six rule was not is not statutory, but the performance of Mr. Cheng was outstanding, in particular his uh, leadership of uh, the um, in the working group on publicity. It has been recognized by the Secretariat as well as members of the public. The SP, uh, SP uh, owed us an explanation why Mr. Chang was dismissed and the uh, chairman of the publicity uh, working group was uh, replaced. I'm concerned about the independence of the uh, membership of the IPCC and their um, background. Uh, Mr. Leung, you should speak directly to the question. I oppose cutting because after cutting, as for the operation of the IPCC, you should speak on that on another occasion. Mr. Chairman, say, if I can get the money to get a full-time chairman, if I can get more funds uh, for the uh, members as traveling expenses so that members uh, can spend more time to uh, get assistance to help each and every member to look in the cases. This is related. Manpower resources, of course, is related, are related to manpower allocation, uh, to, to um, allocation of money. In uh, selecting uh, members, if we can get a um, human resource consultant to give us recommendations uh, on uh, getting members to be uh, to join the council that will be very helpful now this is related to resources if the administration doesn't have resources to conduct a study doesn't have resources uh, to conduct a comprehensive survey if there is then it will certainly be very helpful to get independent and professional people uh, to be members of the IPCC. If the IPCC enjoys independent investigation power, the resources provided must be doubled. IPCC is modeled on uh, similar organizations in New Zealand or the UK or other uh, English-speaking countries. Not all of the, these uh, organizations have in independent investigation powers, but in the long run, I'm of the view that this power must be conferred on the IPCC. It doesn't mean that the IPCC will be investigating every case, serious or minor, but I would think that uh, for serious cases, the IPCC and CAPO should enjoy the power to carry out a joint investigation under the IPCC. We have a serious uh, cases uh, committee. The incumbent chairman is Mr. Abraham Shack. He may wish to supplement in a moment. Because of a lack of resources, uh, we have to spend uh, a long time on uh, serious cases, sometimes more than a year, before the file can can be uh, closed with capital. This is not acceptable. Well, I'm not in favor of uh, asking the IPCC to investigate uh, every case. Some 80 or 90 percent are really not uh, serious cases. It's usually about the police using foul language or abuse their powers and so on and so forth. 
uh, allow me to quote a uh, case to illustrate this. Uh, the case has left a serious impression on me, and that's why I'm saying that the IPCC is not supposed to investigate every case. If it is the case, the budget to, for IPCC must be increased by fivefold or sixfold. Uh, then a, a police officer asks a lady to wind down the window, telling the uh, lady driver that you have parked the, wrong, the, the, the car in the wrong place. Could you please uh, switch off the engine and show me your driving license? And uh, the driver, the lady, uh, gave, show, gave him the driving license. A, la a few days later, uh, that uh, lady driver lodged a complaint. And the complaint is that uh, she was treated impolitely by the officer. And she states, she stated in this uh, uh, statement, I'm not a driver. He didn't call me a missus. That's uh, an insult. I don't know. Uh, well, where's Miss An Zhang? I think uh, she would agree that this is a frivolous complaint. Therefore, we need to reform the IPCC, and in the long term, we must provide more resources to the IPCC. Instead of doing what Mr. Leong Ko Hong or Mr. Wang uh, Chan Chi Chin has said, that in order to uh, ask the IPCC to do a better job, we must cut uh, the budget, that's illogical. And that's why I, w I wanted to tell you more about the operation of the IPCC. I hope the uh, Financial Secretary would uh, uh, significantly increase the resources provided to the IPCC next year. I would like to have a head count. Uh, Miss uh, Miss Chang is N Chang is not with us.
。梁国雄议员。Mr. 梁国雄。And Wei San Chang is still not here. I never mind. Well, I did not know what nonsense she said, but I just wish that she would not say much because it's、uh, really unpleasant to the ear. Let me do it for her. When it comes to the IPCC, well, I have already covered it, and Mr. Kenneth Leung supplemented. There should be three of us as speaking. Ibrahim Shek, Lam Tai Fai, and Chen Kin Po. And this、uh, actually is quite a good group. For the time being, I would like to say one thing: they come to us to ask for funding allocation, and in. In the reply to our question in the special FC, is they said that they will continue to、uh, mount a publicity campaign to enhance understanding、um, of the IPCC's role. Mr. Leung, Kenneth Leung, made it very clear. There is a, a head of publicity is Albert Chang, and. When it comes to how to、uh, publicize the work of the IPCC, how to manipulate、um, the media, I'm sure he is the best person. However, because of the six-six rule and the six-four rule, well, he has to、um, step down. And he says that、uh, there should be continuous publicity campaign to enhance understanding of the IPCC. So, when you want money, you come. You you said that this is、uh, to be done. However, the person who's who excels at doing this has been fired. It's just like、uh, when you send someone to um, buy um, buy something, then you.、Um, And it came, and that person came back with、uh, something of a poor quality. You, we can't even ask them to get、uh, to get one one more dollar. So when、um, Mr. Ronnie Wong was the head of the IPCC, well, there was still some unfinished litigation. So. If you want the independent commission against、uh, independent、uh, police complaints council, you want to give them more resources to improve the secretariat, and so that、um, li liabilities、uh, will not be taken up by members. You will not do something that hurt yourself. They ask ask for money. They said that for twenty fourteen fifteen、um, er, areas for special attention, there is only one. And well, I think that one of them is Albert Chang being fired. I cannot give you more money. I can only cut your、uh, allocation, and that's why I do. You're digressing. Well, I'm explaining to Miss An Chang because she is not familiar with this. We cannot give more to the、uh, budgeted expenditure of the administration. Well, it's not the case that if you just、uh, say a few words in panels, then、um, the government will give more money into it. If it's that way, it will be so easy. In relation to the matters requiring special attention, we see that, for reasons I have stated, that、um, it's、uh, illogical. We should cut its resources. One of them is strive to reduce the time taken to examine. 
investigation reports submitted by Capel. Well, I've said this to Mr. Leung. He already told us that uh, there has been 20 cases. They, uh, he's been given to them um, Friday, Friday, 4 o'clock. So what are you supposed to do over the weekend? He wanted to have a more case officers just to maybe um, get things ready, uh, trawl through the information so that things will be easier. If you want to shorten the time spent to examine investigation reports submitted by Capo, then you have to do some preparatory work and you need some people to do that for you. They ask for funding allocation. That accounts for 10% of the budgeted expenditure, but that is not done. Perhaps Abram Shek would say something, or maybe Mr. Kenny Fleur would um, say it, will say something about it with his first hand experience. So it's appropriate for me to cut his resources. For 2014 15, matters requiring special attention, let me quote it. I'll be quick. Identify any faults or deficiencies in uh, Hong Kong police force practices or procedures with a view to reducing the number of complaints. I don't see how the IPCC can do that. Let me give you an example. When it comes to conflicts between uh, the public and the police, say arrangements of uh, demonstrations and marches, confrontation, parties being present at the same uh, at the same location. During the days of Mr. Chak, that was a new idea, the so-called new idea. Where there is, uh, where there are conflicts, someone would be sent to monitor it. Say the first of July um, marches, the police said no to um, donation kiosks along the streets. Then there should be an appeals board to deal with the uh, decision. But the appeals board did not say anything, so Mr. Jack sent someone uh, as an observer to see, to look at the situation. And Mr. Jack said, well, actually, order was good. It was, uh, the flow was smooth, not obstructed. So in relation to identifying faults or deficiencies in the police forces practices or procedures with a view to reducing the number of complaints. That it, that is exactly what this is about. But do does the IPCC have the manpower and financial resources to do that? No, I don't think so. Let me give you an, another example. Occupy Central, which may not happen. On its issue, we see that uh, Eddie Ng, well, he's not here, but he uh, said some nonsense yesterday about schools. IPCCs are bodies that uh, keeps a check on possible abuse of power on the police. should compile uh, an analysis report of these events, I think. To this date, the administration is not serious
in building uh, an, an image of independence of the IPCC in the public. And uh, because it, it relies on capital, let me give you another example. When it comes to um, registration of uh, bodies, there is a separate section under the police, under the uh, uh, public order ordinance. Someone of the rank of a superintendent will make a decision of whether to allow registration of a body or otherwise. But very often, someone goes to um, make a registration, but the case has been dragged on. Say there is a pledge of four weeks, and uh, even after the four weeks, um, the applicant would be told that there is still some information missing. I try to register a, a body um, called, um, well, worse to the effect, not to forget about June 4th. And uh, and the um, author um, of totalitarian rule of the uh, Chinese Communist Party, but I, but they made things difficult for me, and they they got very pedantic with me. So how come some bodies are allowed to register while others are not? And I think the Democratic Party is now registered uh, as a business. But there are problems. You too? Civil, the Civic Party too? Or is it just um, Miss Claudia Mo Yu? So it's a company. Well, for a company, uh, there are um, directors. When there is a change of directors, it involves a lot of procedures and formalities. Well, according to the basic law, Hong Kong people enjoy enjoys the right um, of organization to be an, a member of the organization of an org organization but our right in this regard has been completely taken away I know that the uh, capital has received a lot of complaints a lot from me well the IPCC uh, has no power now we see the uh, pres the chairman coming back time flies. If you want to see the whole picture, you ought to look. Uh, you uh, can get a glimpse of it from the details. And now that uh, Abraham Shek and uh, Lam uh, Lam Tai Fai and uh, Chen Qing Po have all left, well, let me tell Miss An Chang, listen carefully, be attentive. You can't give money to the administration, can't give more, and you can't simply ask for money in a panel. They won't give you money. If you don't come back, and Chang, I'm going to call, I'm going to do a roll call. Summing up. In, a, in reply to our question from the IPCC on three areas requiring special attention i see that uh, they cannot deliver and cannot deliver any of them that's why uh, i have no choice but to cut their budget well you may ne not have killed boren but boren dies for you but you but a, a phoenix uh, burns from uh, reborn from its ashes. Uh, there are a lot of in, uh, flaws in the IPCC, and as a result, uh, Mr. Ronnie Wong was entangled in numerous litigations because of these uh, flaws. Well, actually, it's a blessing in disguise. Well, the uh, incapable doctor didn't uh, provide any medication. And I, I say I'm going to uh, kill him if you, you don't provide the medicine. Then he's forced to give medicine. This is just like abduction. It is it's not threatened. In fact, it's an embrace. It is an embrace rather than abduction. I said that uh, Chiang should be called back to listen 
to Abraham, uh, Tai, Fai, and uh, Kin Po. So uh, she should come back. A quorum call, please.
Does any member wish to speak? Mr. Albert Chen. Uh, Mr. Chairman, in the first uh, joint debate, um, many areas are covered concerning the CE's office, the uh, Executive Council, the CPU, the offices of the CSA, CSRA, and also FC. I've spoken a lot on that uh, joint debate, in that joint debate, and for this I can move to the second group afterwards. Now concerning this group, first on the CPU, I said that I would do some sum, summing up concerning uh, amendment number 734, cutting $2.7 million under head 142. This is the pay for the um, director of the, or rather the chief advisor of the CPU. The, um, in terms of qualification, experience, and reputation, and if you know her mindset, you know her ex um, ability um, of uh, expression, uh, she has been the worst of all the chief advisors of um, the uh, CPU. I hope uh, the uh, members will support our proposal to cut her uh, salary. Yes, so Amendment 723, uh, cutting head 124 by $9.8 million. This is the uh, pay for or uh, the budget for the research studies for the whole year of the CPU. Now they do not announce their study results, and the studies are commissioned by the CPU and given to the Institute of uh, One Country Two System uh, Research Institute uh, were not disclosed, and they said it was top secret. In fact, um, the One Country Two System Research Unit, a research institute, has. Uh, employed internet bouncers uh, to criticize those, uh, to attack those who uh, criticize the government. That's hard to understand if they do it with public money. So, uh, now, the last part is about the Security Bureau and related issues. I've raised an important question for many years, and uh, that is the regulation of debt collection. The Law Reform Commission has made this uh, recommendation, and that is the uh, debt collection agencies uh, should be regulated. For years, the Security Bureau has refused to take action. My ward office has received uh, complaints uh, about uh, intimidation or alleged intimidation by such a debt collection agencies. In a year, there can be uh, as many as uh, 30,000 cases reported to the police, so we can expect hundreds of thousands of people being harassed in the year. But the security and bureau and the police just ignore them. This is an example of a government business collusion because uh, the agencies were uh, commissioned by the banks, telecommunications, service providers, and so and big consortia. There's so many complaints. It's unacceptable. And still, the government has refused to take any action. On this ground alone, uh, we should uh, cut the, the budget for the Security Bureau. Therefore, I support amendment. The A68 to cut the budget of the Security Bureau by one one four one one hundred and fourteen million dollars. For years we have been uh, concerned about police abuse 
of powers of police. Mr. Uh, Leung Kong Hong is a uh, typical case. Uh, the police officer saw Mr. Leung Kong Hong coming, and uh, without good cause, they spray pepper sprayed on him, and now the, our incense wood uh, has all but all chopped down, all been chopped down by illegal immigrants. And illegal fishing in our waters continue without um, control. So we have uh, senior corrupt of officials and minor corrupt officials, and the security bureau has not uh, shown any concern about these problems. That, that's why Hong Kong is uh, in a downward spiral. And we have also suggested for many years that uh, for tourists or two-way permit holders, there should be proper scrutiny of uh, of the ground of uh, such visas. And the multiple entry visas have uh, caused a lot of public discontent. And on all these issues, the Security Bureau has acted passively. They are not politically alert to such uh, issues. Because the uh, officials used to be uh, disciplined services officers, they, they are so used to taking orders. And the problems uh, keep deteriorating and uh, people's livelihood has been affected. So H68 or H76 are related to such cuts. Uh, there's a proposal to cut the $3.38 million, the full year pay of the Secretary for Security. I fully support this. I'm, dip, uh, I'm very disappointed with the performance of Mr. Lai Chung Kuo. And he uh, sided. He has sided with the police and allowed the police to bully the general public. We used to uh, admire the police officers. Not anymore. And our police officers are acting like uh, city uh, inspectors uh, on the mainland. The media the hurt me wrong instead of uh, reporting my speech. They said uh, that I was talking about cost. I want to uh, rectify this mistake mistake of the uh, TV station news report. I'm talking about those uh, inspectors uh, bullying the, the general public uh, in mainland cities. Does any other member wish to speak, Mr. Chen Chi Chin? Thank you, Chairman. Let me continue with my uh, proposed amendment uh, 791, head 144, and that is uh, the amount of uh, 8.09 million to, uh, to promote human rights and equal opportunities by CMAB. I've talked about uh, the poor job done by the CMAB in promoting the rights of the child. There were five programs to promote the rights of the child. Now we have only got three, three programs. So in terms of the quantity, it has also dropped. And they're all routine. 
they would uh, fund research, they would uh, work with the uh, RTHK, they also uh, produce uh, APIs and fund the Children's Rights Education Funding Scheme, and uh, they print uh, leaflets on the Convention of the uh, Rights of the Child. And this year, they are not going to do this. Uh, the expenditure on this has make has reached a record low, from one point eight four million in twenty twelve thirteen to last year's two point one five million, and this year. 1.25 million. The government must explain why the the promotion of the convention on the rights of the child uh, is facing a a regression. It's re decreasing. I don't think many. I think members here will will, will not accept this. Miss An Zhang asked me to take this up. Uh, in our panel meetings, we are advocating for a, a council on the rights of the child. Well, theoretically, if we want to do this, we can uh, raise the matter at a meeting of the uh, Constitutional Affairs Panel. We did, and uh, deputations came to express their views as, as well. And there was also a motion debate at a, at a council meeting. Now, sixty-nine members all agreed, but uh, the motion is not binding on the government. It can just be ignored by the government. So we have to exhaust all means, and that would include doing something in the scrutiny of the 2014-2015 budget. And at the committee stage, we would uh, now like to move an amendment. That would uh, cause the maximum damage to the government. Dr. Fernando Zhang asked a question of the administration on the uh, expenditure amongst uh, in the past five years to promote the Convention on the Rights of the Child. The highest was recorded in 2009 2010, 1.943 million. And 2010-2011, it dropped to 1.482 million. 2011-2012, and 1.06 million. Why? From 1.9 to 1 million. Why? Why was such a drop? So from 2009 to 2010, to celebrate the adoption of the the 20th anniversary of the adoption of the convention, there were special activities. So they were actually putting up a show. It was the twentieth anniversary of the convention. There was a major celebration, so more resources were provided. But a, a celebration is just a ritual. Can you really promote and apply the convention in Hong Kong? That's the important thing. You must monitor the progress and increase the uh, funding. It's not about organizing celebrations or parties for the sake of having parties. You can uh, give up, give uh, a one hundred percent increase. Uh, in oh eight oh nine, it was zero point nine million, but oh uh, nine ten is one point nine million. And the same logic applies here. Yeah? We we give you the money. You you do a sloppy job, so we might as well take it back and withhold the funding. That's what I want to do. In respect of this amendment moved by Mr. Leung Ko Hong on the on cutting the uh, budget for promoting human rights and equal opportunity. These are important matters to us. Why am I proposing a cut? I think we should explain so that the public will not misunderstand what we are trying to achieve. Next, uh, I want to turn to judiciary, the judiciary, the DOJ, and other issues in the same group. 
is head AT Judiciary S D for J D of J head ninety ninety two Legal Aid Department nine head ninety four free amendments uh related to the legal legal aid department I I spoke on those earlier. Here I have to beg the pardon of Mr Leung Ko Hong. I cannot support uh, the five amendments about the judiciary. In last year's committee stage uh, debate, there were some uh, judiciary-related amendments, and afterwards, some government officials asked me not to cut any expenditure of the judiciary because the judiciary is independent, just like the legislature. So, uh, are we trying to exert pressure on the judiciary? And uh, maybe we'll be summoned by the judges to explain to them. We legislate, and the legislature is uh, enforced. It's applied by the judiciary. It's not that well, we want to uh, affect the performance of the judiciary. I don't think. Uh, we should allow a situation whereby we enact legislation which no court can uh, effectively apply. Maybe Mr. Leung Ko Hong should uh, explain again. We're talking about Amendment 414, a cut equivalent to the uh, whole year budget for the uh, a resource center for unrepresented litigants, uh, two point nine eight eight million dollars. Maybe uh, the amount is too small, and uh, I cannot really explain why we have four one six. It's the uh, poor box uh, budget, eight thousand dollars. Why? Four one six, and then four one seven. The cut is about the uh, exp annual expenditure on. Uh, Witnesses and uh, members of the jury. Do you are you really uh, seeking an increase to the budget? I hope Mr. Leung Ko Hong can explain when he speaks again. See if I get. So, the group of judiciary had eighty. I'm afraid I cannot support it. I will abstain. And you have to find the person to uh, that is to blame. If you are unhappy about the judiciary. And if you want to find the culprit, you have to go to the D of J, the head of the D of J, that is Secretary for Justice. So I will speak in support of items 477 and 478 by Mr. Raymond Wong and Mr. Leung Kwok Hong. Uh, in relation to the uh, annual budgeted expenditure of the um, emolument of the Secretary for Justice, $3.5 million. Mr. Leung Kwok Hong gives us a choice of uh, six months of his pay. That is, for an item number 4A2, an amount of $1.749996. Why do we ask to cut? The pay of the S for J, as you know, that the rule of law is very important. If Hong Kong people are to rank, rule of law will be one of the first three, and it's also a cornerstone on which our success as uh, financial services is built on. We have a fair, just, and open society with the rule of law. This um, provides a fair competition environment for our investors. It's very important. The S4J is the chief legal advisor of the administration. He is also a member of the EXCO. He should be an example to uh, guard the spirit of the rule of law in Hong Kong and should not take the lead to circumvent uh, the laws of Hong Kong. The S for J, apart from being responsible for the D of J, 
uh, giving advice to departments and bureaus. He's also responsible for drafting um, bills, represent the, the administration in legal process, and promote the rule of law in Hong Kong. If you look at Head 92, the expenditure. is $1.7952 billion, including uh, prosecutions, uh, civil liabilities, uh, dra law drafting, and uh, international law. And I will take some out at, as examples to explain to you. Well, actually, the D of J is the biggest um, legal service provider in Hong Kong. The office of the S4J oversees six units. Let me now turn to the undertaking of the S4J to see if we should cut the uh, pay of the S4J. The six areas, civil, international law, law drafting, uh, legal po uh, policies, Prosecution and uh, constitutional development, affair, uh, constitutional development, and I think the biggest amount is spent under Program Two, civil. For twenty fourteen and fifteen, the budgeted amount is nine four nine hundred forty one million dollars, which is an increase of over 48%, which is the lion's share. But my focus is under Program 3, Legal Policy, is budgeted to be $114.5 million, an increase compared to last year of 22.7%. The mission of the S4J is um, for the legal sector to cooperate with the judiciary to improve uh, legal efficiency, to maintain the highest professionalism and, eth and ethics, to let the clients know what difficulties are, uh, lies in the, in the course, and to make sure that the professional standards are abide, abided by by legal prof, by the legal profession. However, we see in in the uh, sky of the law in Hong Kong, there are a lot of uh, black clouds. Our rule of law is fading. Former High Court Judge. Uh, Mr. Bukhari said that uh, there is an unpre unprecedented storm brewing in Hong Kong. It has caused um, great waves in Hong Kong. And in relation to uh, rights of abode and type 2 babies, Justice, uh, former Justice Bukhari said that, um, well, everything will have should be done um, above board if you want to overturn or uh, have the decision of the court overturned. Don't do it um, under the table. And the former Chief Justice, Mr. Andrew Lee, said, and um, the uh, former S4J uh, said that uh, we should also uphold the rule of law. I'm not going to call for quorum yet. I'm going to speak first.